In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today the Mass is offered for the souls in purgatory, and we honor today St. Jerome Emiliani. We can also remember St. Josephine Bequita, uh, two different saints offered this day. Uh, St. Josephine Bequita, the former slave and uh, someone who became a religious, uh, but today we'll honor Jerome Emiliani in the 1500s, uh, an Italian priest who dedicated himself to the service of orphans and the poor, founding a religious order. Uh, we call upon their intercession this day, and we ask the Lord to prepare our hearts and our minds to enter more worthily into these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, who sent St. Jerome Emiliani as a helper and father to orphans, grant through his intercession that we may preserve faithfully the spirit of adoption by which we are called and truly are your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and a darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters, to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. The word of the Lord. Thanks. May the Lord be glad in his works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. 
You are clothed with the majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean, as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the water stood. You send forth springs into the water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them, the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches, they send forth their song. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak, and as many touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus I'd like to continue uh, the theme, which I, I think it's important for us to continue to visit, of not giving in to fear, of uh, there being many reasons, I think, for us to be fearful and anxious and preoccupied, uh, looking at the world around us, but that we, in fact, should be courageous and bold. And what is the reason for that? Uh, ultimately, it, it is because of the Lord, because the Lord has everything in his hands. To, and today's gospel is a great example of that. So uh, people might look at their circumstances and say, oh, look at all the people who are poor or who are sick, uh, those who are in need. But Jesus can come and, in fact, uh, solve many of their problems. The sick he can heal. In fact, all they needed to do was to touch the tassel on his cloak, uh, and just by simply the touch, Jesus' own touch was enough, in fact, to cure them of disease. It's a reminder then that things that sometimes we think are big problems that we cannot solve, they're too big for us, well, they're not too big for the Lord. So even sickness can be overcome, that the Lord can, um, can bring a solution to that. That's one reason for us to be confident. But I think that there's even more than that, because if we think this is impressive, that Jesus, in fact, can cure just simply with a touch. Well, just prior to this gospel, the, the event that we heard in Mark's gospel just before this was Jesus walking on the water, which means that Jesus can not only control the um, matters of sickness or of health, uh, if we're worried about sickness, remember the divine physician can help us there, but Jesus even has powers over the elements of the world, being able to walk on water, power over creation. And there's really no greater example of the power that the Lord has over creation than we can say in the first reading, the act of creating itself, creating ex nihilo, creating out of nothing uh, all of the heavens and the earth. What's remarkable here is that Jesus does this not just simply by touching, but we can say that this is something the Lord God does simply by speaking, by his word. He says, let there be light, and then there was light. Consider for a moment that so often if we want to make something or fashion something or do something or solve something or repair something, we have to act upon it. So, so often it's not, well, I just thought that this, my toaster should, be, should, should function, and it happened. No, it doesn't work that way. I told my toaster to function, and it started working, and it doesn't work that way. So often we have to do something to it 
by saying, oh, look, it's not plugged in. I have to take action and plug it in, now it works, or whatever. Maybe something else has to be done, but we have to act upon things in order to change them. But the Lord can just simply will that something happens and it occurs. That's how powerful the Lord is. Um, as powerful and as remarkable as we think Jesus' healing touches, his word of command is even something greater than that. So all the more reason, then, do I say, that we should not be afraid or fearful because the Lord who simply by his word of command can accomplish anything, even the creation of all that is, um, that in fact is a remarkable power. And it is the Lord God who loves us who wields that power. Is that something that we can ever have a share in? Generally speaking, no. We, generally speaking, we have to act upon things in order to make something happen. But not always. Because one of the gifts that the Lord gives to us, especially in the sacraments, I think is a share in this creative power of the Lord. Because think of what happens in each of the sacraments. They occur simply because we say so. So it's by the word that is spoken. Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body. So priests have a share in that creative power because by the words of consecration, uh, a miracle that is greater than any, uh, any natural occurring phenomenon we could have here uh, occurs, the presence of Jesus Christ um, being transformed from bread into something remarkable, the sacramental presence of our Lord Jesus Christ truly present. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and sins are washed away. I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And sins are, are forgiven. Um, and even you'd say, you'd say, well, okay, that's all well and good because priests get to say all of those words. Uh, or bishops get to ordain, things like that. But in the sacrament of marriage, it is the words that are spoken. I take you to be my husband or to be my wife. And those words are powerful. So even for married people, you cause a marriage to come into being by the spoken word. And I think another thing that none of us should ever take for granted is he says, well, what, is, what are we doing when we're praying? When we pray, we speak words or lift up our thoughts to the Lord. And are those powerful? They actually are. And that's something we should never forget as well, that the power of prayer, in fact, is something truly remarkable. Sometimes I think we focus so much on, well, we need to find solutions to our problems. So what are you going to do about it? Well, sometimes the best thing for us to do about it is to take this to the Lord and let the words of our prayer carry effect, not because our, we can make our words have that effect, but because the Lord hears prayers and answers them. And in fact, there is, is according to the Lord's promise, as we lift up our prayers uh, to the Lord, that in fact they are powerful indeed. These are things that I think we should never take for granted. So remember that the Lord is powerful, greater than the, the trials that we face in this world. And remember that in the Lord, we also are powerful. That by faith, in fact, the faith can conquer the world. And so it gives us also every reason for confidence. So a little word of encouragement. Let us not be fearful. Let us not give in to uh, any fear or trepidation that we see around us. Sure, we can see many signs of trouble and anxiety in the world, but remember that Jesus has not been overcome by the world, but he has come, in fact, to save the world. And it's in the power of Christ our Savior that we can go forward with boldness and courage. we stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that we might grow in our faith and confidence in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for uh, those who are struggling, those who are sick, and those who are suffering, that the Lord might comfort them and sustain within them the virtue of hope. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who lead and guide us in civil society, that they might do so with principle and with courage. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, especially all the deceased, all the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. 
and we pray for the protection of our own religious liberties, our own freedom of conscience, and the freedoms of the Catholic Church. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation made by your consecrated people in commemoration of St. Jerome Emiliani be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, and grant that by participation in this mystery we may reflect the pattern of your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with all the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Jerome Emiliani, St. Josephine Bequita, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this holy meal give us strength, Almighty God, so that by the example of St. Jerome Emiliani, we may show in our hearts and by our deeds both fraternal charity in the light and the light of truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.